No, it wouldn't be a focus digital network production, the CNJ Speedway Review, the Loki and Jabroni Show, without having some sort of technical difficulty on a night we welcome a guest. So tonight, while we have him, we're going to welcome Jason Blue when we come out of the intro. He's Corey. I'm Chris. This is CNJ Speedway Review. There weren't too many big ones this weekend in Talladega, although I'd like to wreck my Wi-Fi like the number 42 tumbling down the backstretch of Talladega. <laughs> Welcome back to the CNJ Speedway Review. My name is Chris Burns. Across the screen from me, as always, the stat boy extraordinaire, Corey Hoffnagel. And we have from Thompson Motor Speedway, Press Box Jones. His name is Jason Blue. Jason, you get to speak first in front of Corey. How are you doing tonight? Not too shabby. Uh, you <laughs> Not look, you look. Now that we're on air. I know, right? You look great, by the way. And Corey, now that we got the intro out of the way and you've met Jason, you can hear Jason. My God, uh, it's just Talladega, man. That's all I can say. Bumps, bruises, flips, trips, everything but a human zoo. And I think with that uh, that tapered spacer that NASCAR brought down this weekend, you know, I, I thought we pretty much saw old school Talladega racing, you know, like we saw, I think, Probably, I think, like, maybe, like, late 80s, early 90s, whatever you call it, and so forth. And uh, it was actually interesting, too, because leading up to the weekend, you know, everybody was wondering, you know, what we're going to see at Talladega. What are we going to see? What's the racing going to be like? You know, are we going to see big packs, everything, and so forth? I would have to say Sunday, you know, we got it. And then Saturday, I thought, was exciting, too. And uh, But I will have to say that something tells me I think NASCAR is probably going to make a little bit of a tweak with the yeah the taper spacer the next time we go to daytona or talladega in october and july but uh i honestly i have to say you know i thought the super speedway racing was fun and you know i can't wait to see more of that uh this year when we go to daytona in july right and i wasn't too upset with the pack racing there were some breakaways i was uh very impressed with all of it i thought the uh the splitter and the uh larger spoiler on the back really held the cars down in most cases Jason, before we get into it, what'd you think of the Talladega races this weekend? I was genuinely concerned going in. I didn't know how this change was going to affect things. I've watched the restrictor plate racing my entire fandom, so it uh, it'd been a while since I'd seen anything like that on a restrictor plate track. <clears throat> so I was a little concerned. There were some really, really high speeds. I think the highest I saw was between 205 and 210 miles an hour. That's a very fast racetrack. Yeah. They were wide open. And they uh, I liked the racing. I was pleasantly surprised. I was very impressed. It actually reminded me of some of the drafting racing and uh, the pack racing that we've seen at the mile and a half tracks this season, only better. Yeah. So I thought that this looked like what NASCAR is trying to make every race look like, minus you know Kyle Larson going upside down. But yeah, right. Anyways, yeah. I enjoyed it. I thought that the the final few laps were, as usual, the most exciting. Of course, Chase Elliott won out, so that was fun. But um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a very entertaining race, and uh, I think NASCAR needed that after the break because I think it kind of lost some momentum after Easter. I know going into the weekend, I was kind of like, okay, this is going to be really <coughs> weird. NASCAR's back. It kind of felt like coming off of an off week. When you're watching football, it's like, yay, now I have to get myself all pumped up again. And that was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to break format, guys, just a little bit because we don't know quite how long we have Jason. But I really want him to come on. Once again, he's from Thompson Motor Speedway right here in Thompson, Connecticut. Go check him out and go check out the great racing they have up there. Uh, when you go, I want you to pimp out a little bit of what you got going on up at Thompson. But we're yeah, going, we're talk. going, <laughs> we're going in reverse. We're going to break down the cup race right now, and then we'll do the Xfinity race because Jason, of all the people I know, is the top of the line, a number one top dog when it comes to Chase Elliott fans. And when he crossed that finish line at first, I was immediately <laughs> on the text message machine saying, Jason, what are you doing Wednesday night? Come talk about the race. 
I'm going to start with Corey. Corey, your takeaway from the cup race, the Geico 500. Well, I'm going to have to say this, you know, if you were going to win a Daytona and Talladega, the last few years, you know, it would, it would pretty much come down to Ford because, you know, last year's race, we saw Joey Logano win the spring race. And then of course, you know, we had an all four Stuart Haas tandem, you know, draft uh, last October, which of course one ended up winning the race. The other one ran out of fuel. The other one finished second and the other one ran out of fuel. So I think going into this weekend, you know, everybody thought, you know, the Fords were going to have like a big a game, you know, coming into Talladega because they, they ran pretty good when it came to Daytona and everything else and so forth. But I will say this, you know, Chevrolet stepped up their a game and I give them a lot of credit. And, you know, Chevrolet pretty much said, you know what, we only won like four races last year. We didn't really run that great considering the fact that it was a new car. But going into Talladega this weekend, they they got it right. And if you look at the uh, the top ten, most of it uh, pretty much I think you'd have to say like maybe five or six Chevrolets finished in the top ten. And then you only have like I think I'd say three Fords finished in the top ten as well. But – but I look at Chase Elliott and you just think about this kid, you know, last year he wins three races, you know, had a breakout year this year. He gets his first win of the season early in the season than what he did back in August. But now my other question is, you know, who's the next Hendrick driver to win a race? Because obviously, you know, Alex Bowman, of course, you know, still in his uh, younger season, whatever it is. And it's only his second season at Hendrick Byron, of course, you know, has that still being a sophomore. And then of course, Jimmy Johnson, who wasn't one in like, my God, like two years and so forth. But, uh, this, will but be, this weekend, I think, will be his two-year anniversary of his last Exactly. Win. That's correct. And mm-hmm. speaking of which, the last time Jimmy Johnson won, my daughter was in single digits. Let's just yeah. put that into perspective. Real quick. <laughs> exactly. Um, obviously, Chase Elliott comes away he, with the win. He led 45 laps. Jason, that's your guy. How are you feeling <laughs> toward the closing laps? Uh, I'll be honest, the Kyle Larson crash just spoiled it for me just a little bit because when I saw his car go in the air, I immediately didn't think of who's leading the race. I just wanted to make sure he was okay. And then as soon as it settled that, okay, he's, he's fine. He's back on four wheels and he's doing okay. I saw Chase Elliott go across the line and I looked at my dad. I'm like, Hey, Hey, he won. He actually, <laughs> passed. he did it. Hey, look at that. So it was a little different from the first three races that I saw him win, which I was jumping up and down. Uh, I actually don't let my dad forgive him. And I just lost audio on Jason. Yeah. There he is. There he there, is. Yeah. You got a little bit of a drop out there. Yeah, you've got your back. Okay. I, uh, so I, we're going to – go ahead, good. I was just saying I felt bad uh, last season. I was supposed to be – I wanted to be at that Watkins Glen race, and he ended up winning it. Yeah. Uh, it was cool no, watching. That was, him cross that was the a beautiful line. win. Yeah, great win it too. Was cool. It was cool watching him cross the line. But I'll tell you what was really cool is he was being pushed by Alex Bowman, who I think personally will be the next driver in Hendrick's camp to win a race. And behind them was Ryan Priest. And Ryan Priest is yeah. a Thompson Motor Speedway regular. He, uh, we've been rooting for him the entire season. I'm rooting mm-hmm. for him in that 47 car. So it was great to see both of my drivers of choice finish in the top three at Talladega. Corey, I still have to, I still have to send your gimmick out, Corey, but <laughs> yeah. Wrapping my, uh, wrapping my cheat beer in my Ryan Priest gimmick holder. Let's break the race down. Chase Elliott finishes first. Alex Bowman second. Ryan Priest third. Joey Logano fourth. Daniel Hemrick with a fifth place finish. Kurt Busch sixth. Ryan Newman seventh. Brendan gone with a surprising eighth place finish. Eric Almirola ninth. And Kyle Busch. Yeah, we know. Finishes in 10th, your other notables, Brad Keselowski, 12th, Ryan Blaney, 15th, going down the list, Martin Truex Jr., 20th, William Byron, 21st. Would have liked to have seen Jeffrey Earnhardt be higher than 22nd, but we get what we get. Kyle Larson, yeah. 24th, Clint Boyer, 29th, Matt DiBenedetto, 31st, Jimmy Johnson, 33rd, and Mr. Invisible was basically invisible for all but 18 laps. Kevin Harvick comes away in 38th. Oh, you know what, Um, Jason, this is the portion of the program when we break down the race and we say, give us a happy and give us a sad. We'll start with you. Well, obviously, happy is Chase Elliott winning the race. I thought it was a good finish. I thought it was a pulse button finish. I wanted to see if somebody was going to push by him. And, of course, we got that famous Talladega final lap crash, even though it wasn't the biggest of the ones. Counters. Um, I wasn't... 
really find any part of the race where I was really disappointed. I will say that seeing Kevin Harvick go out when he did, I was a little disappointed in that because of how that all played out. And you're not going to like me for saying this, Chris, because I'm actual, I love Kyle Busch and love him speaking out. I thought that Kevin Harvick kind of saying that one thing about people driving over their heads in after the crash, I thought that was uh, a little bit, I wish he went farther with that. I felt like it was a little bit arrogant in the in the moment, and I would have loved to hear him kind of uh, talk more about that, but I'm sure he was fuming. He was mad. He was saying whatever he wanted. So if I had to pick a downer, it would be that part. I would have loved to see a little bit more of Kevin Harvick's outspoken personality. To me, it sounded like he just said something to say something, which to me comes off as a sore loser sometimes. I know Kyle does the same thing, and I forgive him for it, but... I gotta pick. I gotta pick something. <laughs> no, and I, I don't. I don't disagree with that point. Um, the interview did come off as sour grapes. Um, it's funny. Right before that crash, about two laps prior, you hear DW when they're saying, you know, Harvick dropped back into like thirty fourth, thirty fifth. He goes, "There he goes, being all Harvicky again." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> the, the, when he, whenever he says that, bad things happen. Yep. And of course, two laps later was the crash. Not real fond of the post race interview, but I'm sure uh, I haven't looked at his Twitter, nor have I checked out the uh, happy hours on Sirius Satellite Radio. But I'm sure there's been an explanation since then. I just haven't seen it. But right now, we're going to move to Corey with his happy and sad for the Geico 500. All right. So my happy would definitely have to be Ryan Priest. I mean, given the fact that this kid hasn't had a good, hasn't had the best luck of the season, but, uh, to back it up with a third place finish, I thought it was impressive, and uh, I really want to see a lot more good runs out of this 47 team. Uh, hopefully, this season. Um, so my sad on this one, and this this pretty much caught me uh, really quick. But uh, my sad would definitely have to go to Justin Haley. I mean, he was making his Cup Series debut, and uh, and at the time, I think he was running. I think like top 20, top 15, and it looked as if he was going to finish in the top 15 in his debut. And honestly, like you know. For him driving that uh, Spire Motorsports car, I mean, I, I thought it was really impressive. And then, of course, he gets caught up in that late race crash, which, of course, you know, gets with the whole uh, Chris Buescher, Matt DiBenedetto, womb type of thing, whatever it is. But uh, disappointing run for that 77 team, and I really wanted to see Haley run really good. Yeah, I thought he had a real good chance, and you mentioned Matt DiBenedetto. I'm, uh, you know me, every now and again, I'm going to throw you guys a curveball. I'm splitting my happy, and I'm splitting my sad. So my happy. Not only Ryan Priest deserves it, that third place finish. Again, it'd be easy to pick Chase Elliott, but again, to watch Ryan Priest, local boy done good, finishing one step above reigning champion and another local boy, Joey Logano, was just fantastic. One name that I haven't heard either of you mention really is my second split happy is the fifth place finish of Daniel Hemrick. Of all the places you're going to collect your first top five on the Cup Series, Talladega. Wow. Just wow. He was in the right place at the right time throughout the race. Uh, didn't lead a lap, but he was always battling. And that's what I like about him. So I'm splitting the sads. There was a time going toward the last 20 or so laps of the race. I'm seeing Guido up front. I'm like, Matt DiBenedetto, this is it. This is this is good. Nope, not so much. So Matt DiBenedetto gets sad number one. And, of course, Mr. Invisible, Kevin Harvick. Um Looked good. He was fast. When he dropped back, he, he does it all the time. He did what he was doing, and then DW went and rained on my parade by saying, he's being all harvick again. And there we are with a 38th place finish. So, we'll go to the points real quick, and then we'll break the picks, and then we'll go to the Xfinity Series. Kyle Busch still leading the way. First place, 430. Logano second. Hamlin third. Kevin Harvick fourth. How that's still happening, I don't know. Brad Keselowski fifth. Martin Truex Jr. sixth. Chase Elliott seventh. Kurt Busch eighth. Ryan Blaney ninth. And Clint Boyer rounds out the top ten. Eric Almirola eleventh. Daniel Suarez twelfth. Austin Dillon thirteenth. Ryan Newman fourteenth. Alex Bowman fifteenth. And this seems to be a running theme even from last year. Jimmy Johnson is on the bubble in sixteenth. Wow. Just wow. Crazy race, uh, not a lot of movement in the points, but Chase Elliott locks himself in to the playoffs come September. Let's go to the the picks real quick. Now, I thought I was cooked. Once I saw Harvick go out, 
I thought it was all over. I had Kevin Harvick as my hopeful. He finished 38th. I had Brad Keselowski as my sleeper. He finished 13th. And saving the day for Team Chris was Eric Almirola finishing 9th. You add that up, that's a 60. You divide that by 3. My finish is a paltry 20. Mm. On, the, on the other side, Corey had Brad Keselowski as his lock. He finished 13th. He had Justin Haley as his sleeper. He finished 32nd. And he had Ricky Stenhouse Jr. as his hopeful. He finished 25th. That's a total of 70. You divide that by three. Corey in the 20s with me, 23.3. And now, Corey, there's a saving grace here. We said what was going to be the lap of the big one, correct? Yes. Now, I have to tell you, I went back, I looked at the crash results, and the big one happened at lap 18. You had lap 108. You were the closest without going over. Sir, you got the bonus point for the week. So basically, congratulations. Thank you. Moving right along Ooh. while we still have Jason. The Xfinity race on Saturday. Tyler Reddick comes home with a win. Didn't get to see any of it. Didn't get to oh, listen to any of it. Just a really crazy day. So, uh... We'll start with Jason. Did you watch the Xfinity race? I got to see the end of it. I was really happy that Tyler Reddick was able to pull it out. He has been he has been uh, racing really well this season. I think that was his first win of the year. And, uh, yeah, correct. Very, very much overdue, especially from Junior Motorsports to um, to RCR after yeah. winning the title. He. Uh, he won Daytona last year, so it didn't surprise me that he won Talladega this year. I think that he has run more consistently this year. Uh, I will say this. I give a lot of flack to the Xfinity Series for letting Cup drivers in, or NASCAR for letting Cup drivers run in the Xfinity. Much they do. But, um, seeing these drivers compete the way that they – we've seen Cole uh, – I can't remember all of the drivers that won – this season, but we've seen many different, um, many different Xfinity regulars beat cup drivers. I can't remember if there were any cup drivers in the field this weekend, but to see another Xfinity regular win, I, I enjoyed that very much, especially at a place like Talladega where you never right, going to have Right. On the list. Cup guy. One is our favorite big boy for cup driver Jeff Green. So, no, not a lot of uh, cup presence on the uh, on the track this weekend. No, indeed, it has. So, Corey, it's your, yeah, Corey, it's your turn, man. Tell, tell us what you saw in Saturday's Xfinity race. Yeah, I will say this. I mean, you know, I thought the Xfinity race was exciting as well. And uh, also, Jason, to answer your question. Um, so, the Xfinity series does these uh, dash for cash races. So, what that is is, you know. Uh, so cup drivers, they're not allowed to run any of the dash for cash races, nor the, uh, the playoff races coming up in September. So it's kind of a rule. And, uh, and I'm honestly, playoff. I didn't know about the, that they couldn't run dash for cash. So. Uh, so that's actually a new rule that NASCAR, I think implemented, I think last year or I, yeah, I'd probably say last year or so forth, but, uh, but I thought the race was exciting on my end. And, uh, it, it was funny cause I almost slept through like the finish and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, there was one part of the race, and honestly, I swear, I thought the 08 of Greg Golding was going to win the race. When they were coming down the backstretch, and he had that run behind the 98 of uh, Chase Briscoe, I really thought, okay, this is going to be Greg Golding's moment. He's going to take the high side, and then they're going to make it side-by-side -side at the finish. But if you looked at the Xfinity race throughout the whole entire race on Saturday, there was a lot of blocking going on. I would say, you know, Tyler made a lot of aggressive blocks, and – it's just one of those moments like, you know, there was a time like, you know, if you're mirror driving and if you're doing it like too much, then chances are, you know, you might get wrecked, you know, like whatever turn it is possible. But, uh, but yeah, great to see the uh, two car win. And uh, to me, like, you know, it's not really surprising that Reddick did move to Richard Childress racing. Um, I will say that, you know, now that he moved to RCR and I kind of predicted, you know, I think Reddick can win a lot more races than what he did for junior motorsports. Now let's not forget about this. You know, I didn't pick him to win the championship last year, but he pretty much beat the odds no matter what. But, uh, but I will say that, um, I do give a lot of credit to that two team and, you know, and considering that this weekend's the last race for the dash for cash races. I really want to see, you know, a lot more of these Xfinity regulars, you know, step it up and hopefully they can beat the cup guys every week. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll agree with all of that. 
And on top of it, when you go back to that Greg Alding situation, he's getting that mega push from Chase Briscoe. Once he broke out, it seemed like Briscoe lost a little bit. He ended up finishing fourth rather than third. You know, kind of lost a step, but everybody knows at Talladega, when you get out of a draft, and now it's like you hit a brick wall of that dirty air. Man, there's nowhere to go but back. Nobody really has single car speed anymore at Talladega since we lost Dale Earnhardt back in 2001. Yeah. The only guy I've ever seen with single car speed at this racetrack. So, you know, we're never going to see it again. It is what it is, but... If you're going to be pushing a guy like Greg Galding, do not get off his bumper, no matter what. That could have been – we could have been talking about a little bit different finish here, but we're going to go to the finish right now. Tyler Reddick comes home in first, Greg Galding second. Christopher Bell third, Chase Briscoe fourth. Fourth, sorry, Austin Sendrick fifth, Joe Nema, John Nemechek, sorry. I'm so old, I probably would say uh, John Nemechek, the original. <laughs> anyway – J.H. comes in sixth, Justin Haley seventh, Mr. Williams, can't remember his first name, doesn't matter, eighth, Landon Castle ninth, and <laughs> see, all these all these different guys that don't run regular, Cockrum, what's his first name? Chris. Thank you. Is in tenth, other notables, Noah Greggs in eleventh, we got Brett Moffitt finishing a very impressive thirteenth, Ryan Sieg sixteenth, we got Brandon Jones eighteenth. Uh, nobody's favorite, B.J. McLeod, finishes 22nd. <laughs> Jeffrey Earnhardt finishes 26th. Justin Allgaier, 28th. Ross Chastain, 30th. Cole Custer, 32nd. And the C&J Speedway Review official mascot, Jeff Green, does not come home in last. He comes home in 35th, leaving last to Joey Gase. I guess I'll start this one. My happy, obviously, for week after week after week, is going to go to Tyler Reddick. He's keeping himself... At the top of the point standings, already enjoying a 22-point lead over second place. Really good day for him. Uh, my sad, obviously, is going to go to Cole Custer. Uh, not not good to see my Stuart Hots brothers finish so low in the field. And 32nd was not the place he wanted to be this weekend. Corey, your turn. All right. So my happy would definitely have to go to Greg Galding. I mean, great runner-up place finish and. Uh, also, another great news for Greg Golding is he picked up additional sponsorship for the next race coming up at Dover on Saturday. So, great run for him. Uh, my sad is going to have to go to Jeffrey Earnhardt. I really wanted to see him run really well, and hopefully, I, you know, could get him a victory. But got taken out, you know, near the end of the race and disappointing run uh, for that IK9 Toyota. Excellent. And you, Jason. Uh, I would actually give Gray Golding my down because it would have been great to see somebody like him win the race, especially at that LA. may be that may be the first time ever that a guy who finishes in the money gets a sad for the race. But I get where you're going with this. <laughs> I, I I would have loved to see a name like his get up to the front. Uh, that said, Tyler Reddick is my up because I I was a fan of his last year. I thought there were a lot of people that. Uh, that underestimated his talent. I know quite a few of them in the business that underestimated his talent, but I always knew he had potential. When he moved over to RCR, I do agree. I think that's a good move for him. It may have even been a lateral move at that at worst, but I think there's more potential for him to move up to the cup. He's already doing a couple of races in the 31 this year. He did yeah. it in the Daytona, Daytona. So I think that this was a good move for him, and he is showing it by winning in Talladega and being consistent every race that he's run so far this season. Or yeah. most of them. And let's be honest, this consistency shows he's got a win that locks him in to the playoffs. He's got seven top fives, and he currently leads the point standings. Number one, Christopher Bell, number two, Austin Sendrick, third, Cole Custer, fourth, Justin Allgaier, fifth, John Hunter Nemechek, sixth, Chase Briscoe is in seventh, Ryan Sieg, eighth, Noah Gregson, ninth, and Justin Haley rounds out the top ten. Michael Annette locked into the playoffs in 11th, and Brandon Jones is in 12th. The bubble between Brandon Jones and 13th place sure. Ross Chastain right now sits at 33 points. Question for the panel. If he does not win, can Ross Chastain possibly point his way in, or is Brandon Jones just running that good of a season where he's going to hold him off? Yeah, I, I would probably say, you know, I think 
I, I think Brandon Jones is going to hang on the 12th, no question about it. I mean, I, I just look at Ross Chastain, and, you know, of course, he was in that 10 car this weekend for uh, for uh, college racing, and I really think this was – it was an opportunity race for him to win. But – and I think Chastain, I think, is only in three races in the, in the 10 car, and I think he only has, like, one more race. But – I would probably say, on my opinion standpoint, I I, I think uh, I think Jones is going to hang on to that twelfth and final spot. Jason, I am torn between what I think is going to happen and what I want to happen. <laughs> I think Brendan Jones is going to fight hard and probably keep that number twelve spot, barring any other surprise winners this season. But I think Ross Chastain has talent. I think that. If given any opportunity to drive another car, say he gets a few rides at uh, Joe Gibbs Racing or anything like that that come out of nowhere, he really does have a chance to get in. I don't see that happening. I, I have said it from day one that Ross Chastain is a talent given good equipment. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You Absolutely. know, so um, to me, it really depends on what equipment he gets. The college racing is nice, but that 10 car is just – a essentially a building team for them so i don't think that he's getting top equipment there so i hope that he will be able to pull it off but if he has to do it in points i don't see him doing it okay so without knowing how much time we have you here for before we look at dover and other news tell us what's going on up at thompson speedway (laughs) thompson speedway uh first of all i love being a part of this track it is the oldest paved oval racetrack in the united states it is an amazing venue if you ever have the chance come on down and uh i might even show you around a little bit and uh we had a very good icebreaker weekend it was a great crowd with some great racing some of the best racing i've seen there in a long time and i've seen some great racing there uh coming up uh, a couple weeks from now on sunday may 19th we're going to be honoring the military and the veterans They will get in free with an ID on Sunday, May 19th. Uh, In addition with the limited sportsman long distance division will, uh, or a limited sportsman division long distance race will be taking place. Uh, The Sunoco modifieds, limited sportsman, uh, late models, light modifieds, and the mini stocks are all on the schedule. Uh, It's $35 to get into the pits, $18 for general admission. So uh, we hope to see you all there. It's great racing. Trust me, I'm there every time they do this. I've uh, been there for five years now. I don't know why I stopped counting. So uh, it's, it's a great racetrack, great racing. It's a great environment. Come on down and hang out. Now, the only thing that is missing from your entire spiel right there, and being a former radio guy, I really want to help you sell, sell, sell the great Thompson Speedway. I have fun every time I go up there. But the correct vernacular is $18 pays for the whole seat, but you only use the edge. edge. There you go. Yep. <laughs> I don't have the uh, I don't have the uh, that kind of experience to really sell it that way. I can I'm work with you. Pre- this, I'm just the press guy. I'm not hey, the color guy. <laughs> this, this is your third appearance on the Focus Digital Network programming. For those of you that don't know, Jason was a part of our Jeff Gordon tribute uh, at the end of Jeff's fabulous career he was also a part of the garth brooks episode that we did when myself loki and jason all at different times so jason and i were there on the same night we each other night. Appear. Yep. yeah uh great times and you added so much so it's nice to have you here and i've wanted to have you here for quite a while but now we have to give it to Statman himself the tower of power too sweet to be sour funky like a monkey and first of all why did you shave your playoff beard Corey? that's why we lost last night you know it <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say that uh, my girlfriend Chelsea had Greek Easter on Sunday, so oh, here we go. Her side of the family, you know, was Greek, and I had to be clean shaving. It was it was mandatory on my part, but uh, yeah, that that's right. that's the tough. I mean, it, it was tough to shave it off, but I had to I had to get it off at some point before we go into Dover, and hopefully Jason will be here, and we're gonna give him his own column for picks. Mm -hmm. There used to be a superstition amongst Bruins fans that I know. And it was when Emma was a real little, little, little uninteresting blob in diapers. If Emma fell asleep before second intermission, the Bruins won. This was a proven fact. It happened all throughout the 2011 season. Bruins win the cup. Yay for us. The next year, she would fight sleep. She wants to watch her Bruins. She wants to see Milan Lucic. That was her man back in the day. Milan Lucic. 
Mm. And she would fight sleep. And I'd get text messages. You better put that kid to sleep. Give her some Benadryl. We made it deep into the playoffs. Ended up losing. Now it just really doesn't matter. But you shaved your playoff beard. And I get it. It was for family. It was for Chelsea. Tzitzi yeah. Sauce, who we all love and respect so much. But, man, Lynch and I watched the end of that game after doing the Loki and Jabroni show. And our heart fell through our butt. And it was just, nope, okay. We move on to Thursday and pray. But without that playoff beard, mm-hmm. if they lose, Corey. It's on you. It is a no, <laughs> it's not on him. It's on Chelsea Tzatziki Sauce. <laughs> mm. Now, we move on. Corey, we're in Dover this weekend. The Monster Mile, one of my favorite tracks to attend. Tell us where, what, and why. Okay, so first of the three races this weekend, um, you have the Gander Outdoor Truck Series on Friday. Uh, five o'clock Eastern time. That is if I do make it home from work at that time, hopefully, uh, on FS1. And of course, uh, Sirius XM satellite radio, which of course you have the motor racing network. The voice of NASCAR. NASCAR. Yes. All right. So I'm still, um, I'm still upset. I'm still upset that you stole my gimmick and you bought those shirts. Oh, please just let that go. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. <laughs> Yeah, you'll let it go sometime soon. All right, so looking at the entry right. list, you have uh, you have Sheldon Creed, you have Tyler Dipple, Jordan Anderson, Todd Gillen in the four. You have Norm Betting, you have Joe Nemechek, Jennifer Joe Cobb, uh, Gustine is back in the truck after being reinstated. Uh, you have Johnny Sauter, Austin Hill, Tyler Ankrum, Harrison Burton, Derek Krause, Spencer Boyd, Austin Wade Self, Brett Moffitt, Brennan Poole, uh, Ryan Sieg, uh, Reed Wilson, Ross Chastain, the 45, uh, Raphael Assard, Ray Cicerelli, uh, Brandon Jones is in the 51 truck this weekend, uh, Stuart Friesen, Natalie Decker, Tyler Hill, uh, Matt Crafton, Jesse Little, Grant Infinger, and Ben Rhodes. All right, Corey, now's the time. We're going to go with you. We're going to skip over to Jason, and then I'll go last. Give me your lock and give me your sleeper for the truck race. All right, so my lock for this one. Uh, this one was a little bit of a tough one because I know the last time, you know, the trucks raced without Kyle Busch was at Daytona. And of course, you know, Austin Hill won that race after winning the Daytona crashathon 250, whatever you call it and so forth. Uh, so I pretty much, uh, I pretty much, uh, rolled the dice on this one. So if my lock on this one, I'm going to have to go, I'm going to have to go with Brett Martin on this because I think he you look at it, you know, last year, uh, GMS won a dope, which, of course, they won with Johnny Sauter a year ago. And I really want to see what this 2004 team can do, especially with Brett. Now, I even know that he hasn't got off to the best start this season. I will say that, you know, he's he's been consistent, you know, the last few races. But, uh, excuse me, um, I will say Brett's pretty much my lock for, uh, for Saturday. Uh, my sleeper. I'm going to have to go with Stuart Friesen. Now, I really want to see this team, you know, win a race, too. And let's be honest, I mean, last year, you know, Friesen had a breakout season, finished runner-up four times, and uh, and hopefully uh, this will be uh, another driver that can get to victory lane sometime soon. And, and hey, hopefully uh, he could run a race somewhere, I think, like the night before or the night after, which, you know, everybody talks about, and, you know, which that makes it interesting of him. Absolutely. Jason, welcome to the pick portion of our program. I want a lock and I want a sleeper. I am going with Johnny Sauter. He's won the last two races. He's won this race the last two years. Granted, he did it in the 21 truck, but I don't think that's going to change as he uh, goes in for uh, Thor Sport this time around. Um, I think that history will repeat itself. I think he's been very consistent, and I think that he can do it again for a third year in a row. Um, I'm going to go with his teammate, Matt Crafton, who w- was the last driver not named Johnny Sauter to win this particular race as my dark horse. I think he's overdue for a little bit of success. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, Corey, this is where it's going to get interesting. I also took Brett Moffitt as my lock for all the same reasons you picked. And my sleeper, I, I-, I fought with this one, but of course I have to go with name recognition. And the name I love to mention is Sheldon. Apollo Creed is yes. going to be my sleeper. So I, I really want Sheldon Apollo Creed to get up to the front, win the race, get himself, get his ticket punched, and move forward. So, Jason, if you don't know, and if you, if we 
someday create a three-headed monster and do this all the three of us collectively right now we have a pick a pick thing going on we do it every race but this year there are stakes we're keeping points and the loser buys the winner a t-shirt of their choice at the end of the season you my friend will get your picks recorded announced next week are you eating chips you are a professional like broadcaster <laughs> Take a wild guess of what I always eat every time on the show. Oh, my God. You know what? I, I could never mind. I'm not even going to say anything. But your picks will be recorded. They'll be announced next week. And I know you listen when you have a chance. So thank you again for that. Um, um, now we move on to the Xfinity Series. Corey, walk it out. All right. So Saturday you have the Xfinity Series, uh, 1.30 on Saturday on FS1. Uh, Sirius XM Channel 90. Uh, Motor Racing Network. The voice of NASCAR. For the second time in a row this weekend. All right, so you know, you guys know the rule. Um, so it's a dash for cash race this weekend, so that means no cup drivers in the field. Uh, so reading down on the list, you have Cole Custer, you have Garrett Smithley, you have Michael Annette, uh, Tyler Reddick, Ross Chastain in the four. You have Justin Allgaier, Greg Galding, Zane Smith in the eight car. Uh, Noah Gregson, Justin Haley, uh, BJ McLeod, nobody's favorite. Um, Riley Herbst in the 18 car, uh, Brandon Jones, Christopher Bell, Kaz Gralla in the 21. Uh, Austin Sindrick, John Hunter Nemechek, Joey Gase, Jeff Green, everybody's favorite. Um, Jeremy Clements, <laughs> Jeremy Clements, uh, Timmy Hill, Mike Harmon, uh, let's see, Ronnie Bassett Jr. And then, of course, last but not least, you have Chase Briscoe. Okay, I'm going to start this one. We'll throw to Jason and Corey. I will. Uh, he'll be the main event on the Xfinity. I'm mirroring my picks from last week. It's all about momentum, momentum, momentum. If you've listened to the show more than twice, you know that that's my favorite word, other than Jones. So I'm going. I'm going to pick Tyler Reddick as my lock. I think the momentum's in his favor. He's had was it seven top tens. He's got the win now that locks him into the playoffs, and yeah. he just seems to excel wherever he goes. And man talking about Ryan Sieg as my sleeper, the needle keeps going up and up and up. It's not long before we see him in victory lane on the Xfinity Series. So, Jason, go ahead. All right. This one was a tough one for me, but uh, the dash for cash drivers, I think it's uh, Dre Golding, Tyler Rennick, Chase Briscoe, and Christopher Bell. I think that uh, I think you're partially right. But I think that the consistency is going to go in the way of Christopher Bell. I think that he's going to win at Dover. I think he's going to dominate at Dover. I'm going to call it a dominating day. But I will give my dark horse or whatever pick to Tyler Reddick. I think if anybody is going to beat Christopher Bell, it is going to be him. Okay. Corey, you got it. All right. So my lock has definitely got to be Christopher Bell. I mean, I do see this as a Christopher Bell type of race, and not to mention he won – this race last year, last September as well. So I really think this is going to be uh, Bell's race to lose on uh, Saturday. Um, so my sleeper on this one, I'm going to have to go with Justin Allgaier. I mean, I really want to see this team run really well. And not to mention this was a team last year that won five races a year ago. And now this year they haven't got off to the best start. But I really want to see this seven-team rebound, and hopefully they can get that first win of the season. I think they won this race last year, actually. Uh, yes. Ooh, well, Spring well, race well, last year. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, so that's, that's the stat that's guy. <laughs> oh yeah. That, that's, what, that's what Corey does, man. He, he looks at the stats. He reads everything. I'm more of a gut pick. He's the stat pick. And last year it showed he, he put a whooping on me like nobody's business. It was like the Bruins and the Canadians. Every time the Bruins get out there, they beat them back to Canada. Nobody wants to hear it. And, uh, just so, uh, if Morgan Brown, <laughs> I care. Adam Crandall, Morgan, Adam, if you're listening, we're all Bruins fans. Your Canadians can go back to Canada and kick rocks. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> so we got the cup race on Sunday. I will not be watching. I'll be listening on my little headset. So, uh, Corey, you know what to do. All right. So, um, okay. Now I don't know why my um, iPad. Not... Now I don't know um, why my iPad's doing option. this. So it's. <laughs> Start new. Uh, you picked on me. You pick on me for my Wi-Fi. That's why. 
No, I don't know why it's doing that, but it's uh, it's funny. But anyways, uh, let's see. You got the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup race, 2 o'clock Eastern time on uh, Sunday on FS1. And, of course, the Motor Racing Network. The voice of NASCAR. Which will be which will be there all weekend for the yes. week. All right, okay, so pretty so. much looking down, you know, you got the you got the same list of guys, so it's pretty much, you know, same as usual. Okay. So Jason, leading it mm -hmm. off, but there's a caveat with okay. the cup drivers. If you listen to the show, you already know you get a lock, you get a sleeper, and you, you get a hopeful. So you got three picks. Hit it. Okay. This one was really tough for me to pick because the winners of this track outside of Jimmy Johnston have been all over the board the last few years. Uh, Tony Stewart's won. Matt Kenseth has won. Kevin Harvick has won. Martin Truex has won. Jeff Gordon won back in 2014. Kyle Busch has won. And Chase Elliott won last year. So I yeah. really wasn't sure at all who to pick. But I'm going to say I'm going to go with the uh, – the Chris mentality momentum is key here. I'm going to go with my buddy Chase and get another Dover t-shirt this year. I'm going to say <laughs> that he is a lock to win. I am going to put his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. If he's going to break out, he, this is going to be the track for him to do it. This is his best track. I've seen him win here. Uh, I saw him win here years ago and he dominated. I think if he's ever going to get back into victory lane, this is a good place to start. So, um, He's my tertiary pick, so to speak. And as far as a hopeful, I'm gonna I can't bet against Kyle Bush on any track in NASCAR. So I'm going to go the easy route and pick him as my hopeful. I don't think he will win, but I think that he is definitely someone to bet on. Okay. Well, Corey, do you want the main event or the semi main? Your call, my friend. Uh main event. All right, so I'll put my picks out there and in honor of Jason being here. I call my picks local Jones. What does that mean? If I can drive within 200 miles to see you race, you're local. So my lock this week is going to be the reigning, defending, undisputed champion, Joey Logano. He's won there before. He can do it again. My sleeper, he just broke his short track uh, blues just a couple weeks ago, going with Martin Truex Jr., who I used to see race at Wall Stadium in New Jersey and have followed him intently throughout his career. My sleeper. No surprise, it's the 47 of Ryan Priest, still waiting to get confirmation that he can and will come on this show at some point. The gimmick box mm. is coming, Corey. I, <laughs> I talked to Mike Cronin. He's got extra large T-shirts, hats, gimmicks of galore coming to us from the one and only Ryan Priest. Extra so, large T-shirts? Well, you're not going to be young forever, man. You don't have my size. Extra large. Extra large is not my size. It is so now because, <laughs> yeah, it is now. You're not going to be thin forever, my man. Trust me. I thought the same thing. And look at me now. Twisted steel and, well, not so much. Anyway, so, Corey, it's your turn. Let's get a lock sleeper and hopeful out of you. Okay, so my lock for this one, um, I'm going to have to go Kyle Busch. I mean, he's been pretty good at Dover the last couple of years, which, of course, the last time he won was 2017. So, He's got to be my lock for this one. Uh, so my sleeper, I'm going to have to go with Jimmy Johnson. I mean, considering the fact he's a 10-time winner, I really want to see him win, and the time to win is now. And let's face it, he has to get back up on his feet, and hopefully that 48 team can get their first one of the season. Uh, so my hopeful, I'm going to have to go with Ryan Blaney. I really want to see this team win, and I just, you know, I mean – the wins are going to be coming. I mean, last year he won with Team Penske on the Roval, but I really want to see this 12 team win more than one race and hopefully can be a uh, playoff contender uh, come September. Yeah, and right now sitting in ninth, um, let's look at ninth versus tenth in the standings. Ryan Blaney sits at ninth with 306. He's got nearly 20 points over 10th place Clint Boyer. So right now he's not in trouble, but you're right. Seeing Ryan Blaney get to victory lane would be fantastic. Now that the picks are over and we have a few usable minutes, Jason, we do this every week and we beg people. We say, give us questions. Do you have any questions that you've wanted to ask anybody? But now you've got two racing geeks on the phone or on the video gimmick, as it were. 
any questions you've wanted to ask? Well, I am a big fan of crossing things off bucket lists. So give me, I would love to know from you guys what three racetracks in NASCAR, and I'm talking about NASCAR's big leagues, so Cup Series tracks, that you would like to see a race on, a Monster Energy Cup Series race on at some point in the near or far future. What is your Ooh. three bucket list racetracks? Uh, Every, go ahead, I'll, give, I'll give you mine just to jump. I'd love to see Daytona. Anybody yes. who doesn't want to see Daytona isn't a NASCAR fan, in my opinion. I'd love to see Daytona. Um, I've seen Charlotte. I've seen New Hampshire. Um, and I'd love to see Martinsville, and I'd love to see Bristol. Those would be my three mm. picks. Okay. Um Every time we cover the race on this show, I, I've seen a lot of them from Daytona to Richmond to Darlington, Charlotte, Dover, etc. I don't want to go down the list, uh, but I kind of just gave you half of them. Br Bristol, easily number one on my list. Always wanted to go. N never really had the chance. Um, man, my second one, only because of the history that's been made there uh, from Rusty Wallace uh, inching himself into the cup championship to the Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick battle to all the classic, classic races that have come out of Atlanta Motor Speedway. That would be my second. And I'm going to have to mirror one of your picks, Jason. Martinsville has always been on my list. People say, well, it's not fast racing. You're right. It's not. It's about a 140 down the front stretch. You woe it down to 65 in the turn. Then you're right back on the gas. Uh, that paper clip has uh, produced some great moments. and I'd love to see some for myself. Awesome. And now, the one and only Corey Offnagel. <laughs> These three are really easy. And, uh, Chris, I got to tell you one thing. Can you please stop messing with my Wi-Fi? I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> sure you didn't do it. I, 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 can tell, I, can tell by, I can tell by that spark on your face. That's none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That moment was sponsored by Miller Lite, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you pretty much decided to dump Bush. Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. Bush wraps the can, and Miller Lite goes in the man. Ah, ah funny. Or, or, as I used to say when he ran for Budweiser, it's butt on the track, Miller down the hatch. Ah, good one. See? It doesn't quite rhyme I as got, well. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't. But, Corey, give us your, uh, your what you, the bucket list Jones right here. Anyways, anyways, these are my three tracks that I list about really easy. Um, So my first one would definitely have to be Talladega. I mean, honestly, like, you know, it's one of my tracks on my number one bucket list that I really, really want to go see. Hopefully me and my dad and Chelsea can go down and see a race down there someday. And uh, I, I mean – Seeing it on TV is one thing, but going there and if you see it live, it's just like 10 times better and it's just amazing. That's how it is. Uh, my second one would definitely have to be Bristol. Why? Because the night race. Um, I've had a friend of mine that that has gone to the night race a couple times and he said that, you know, he's never smiled any more better than it is usual. Um, I forget what he said, but yeah, he, he's been there before. It's been great. And yeah, one of my bucket lists that I really – want to go to someday now my third one you guys might be surprised at this but i kind of thought of this just not too long ago but my third one i want to go see the dirt race at eldora oh yes yeah and, and <laughs> nice the reason why i'm saying that is because if you want to see if you want to see a classic truck race and if you want to see a classic truck race on dirt go to eldora i mean honestly like you know i've never seen a dirt race live before but when the trucks, you know, every time, like when I watch truck race, like when they, when they always run the dirt at, Del at Eldora, I always say to myself, like someday I really want to go there and watch a race. And, and honestly, like, I'm happy that, you know, NASCAR is going back to the dirt routes and for them to say like, you know, Oh, NASCAR should have two dirt races or this and that and so forth, blah, blah, blah. No, it should only be one dirt race a year. And the only dirt race that the trucks will be racing on a year is Eldora. Okay. Now I have a question. And before I do, Jason, uh, just so you know, still rock that die tech cat every chance I get, but I outgrew the shirt cause I'm getting fat. It was a large. So my daughter is now in possession of the Kevin Harvick number four die tech. <laughs> At least it's shirt. 
<laughs> oh, of course, but she's a, a lot of girl. So, you know, she'll she's always like, I, I hope Truex wins, but if he doesn't, I hope Kevin Harvick wins. Anyway, uh, I want to know first race you ever saw on the Cup Series, and who won? Um. I've actually thought about that for a while because I don't know if I could remember. Exactly Live, by the way, in, in the yeah. stands, not on TV. Yeah, I don't know if I can remember exactly when it was, but I believe it was Kyle Busch winning New Hampshire in 2006. I think that was the that was a good race. Yes, I, think I remember that. that. First one I was ever at live. And uh, hmm. what an experience. I've been going to New Hampshire every year since. I went yeah. I, I didn't always go both times. Uh, it was another few years after that before I would start going twice a year. But I think that I think if I'm remembering correctly, that was my first live NASCAR race, and uh, I've been to God, I've been to New Hampshire at least once every every year since, and I've since been now, over, and I've been to Charlotte three times for the All Star. Stars. Now, Jason, one of the last times you went to New Hampshire, didn't you encounter some drunken retard in the stands wearing Kevin Harvick gear? Yeah, he was uh, he was kind of a weird. <laughs> I heard he uh, he does some you know he does some kind of really screwed up online NASCAR show. You know, um, I've watched it a few times. I think he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, but... I wonder who is no, that jolly old fellow. No, wait, J Jason. Here, Jason. Here comes here comes the kicker. When I met Corey, was in the grandstands at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. In I remember seventeen. Yes, and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I don't want to say love at first sight, but he <laughs> he had his he had his uh, NASCAR IndyCar Central live feed going on, and I'm listening. I'm listening. I yeah. kind of moved over. I'm like, w you got a NASCAR show? Yeah. Well, I've got a podcast. You know, let's talk. Maybe you could be on this show. Maybe you could do. Well, here, do my live feed. Okay, I'll do your live feed. I did his, he did mine, and then I don't know how many weeks later, here we are. So New Hampshire does strange things to people. Mm-hmm. And we've met. Uh, uh, have you ever? Have I ever what? Oh, what? Have you ever seen the Earnhardt Rock at uh, New Hampshire? I honestly, I've never seen the Earnhardt Rock. I've oh. I've heard about it many times, and as many times as I've been there, we just never, unfortunately, never took the time to to hunt it down and to see it ourselves. Um, that's one thing it's that we the, really do want to do. I think we'll end up doing that this lot. year. Yes. Go yeah, I think we'll end up doing that this year. And, uh, I've seen some really cool things there. I've seen Richard Petty walk underneath the stands, which is really cool. Um, I met Brad Dougherty there. He was signing ah, stuff. Brad for Dougherty. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he was signing, uh, we were there for the weekend that year and he was signing stuff for the fans through the fence after the race. So we had him sign nice. the race ticket. Nice. Cool. Nice. Mm. And, uh, the coolest we things I ever saw in New Hampshire, but I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh no, I was just going to say there were some really cool things that we've seen there. Um, and we met Rutledge Wood at Victory Lane when we got a pit, mm. by, uh, a pit tour nice. prior to the race, which was really cool. Nice. Two cool, two coolest things I ever saw in New Hampshire was one meeting Harry Gant. Uh, wow, just wow. That was the uh, 2002 New Hampshire race, and uh, the second was when my friend Chad came out from Indiana to go to New Hampshire Motor Speedway. It was on his bucket list. As we're going to our car, you know where the helipad is, way up on the hill. Watch yep. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, and Rick Hendrick get onto the Hendrick helicopter and take off and. Just, hair and hats and just gimmicks are flying everywhere and we're holding on to our stuff and chad is chad is the hugest jeff gordon fan other than you i've ever met he's like i was just five feet from jeff gordon i'm like i know it was awesome when so, uh you know that was it there was one year when uh before we learned <laughs> my dad and i made the stupid decision one year of walking back to our car which was like three miles away from the track instead of taking the <laughs> because that was back when New Hampshire used to sell out all the time. Yeah. But as we were walking back to where our lot was, everybody was running into traffic and we couldn't figure out why. And back then I was a big fan of both Jeff Gordon and Casey Kane. I still am a Casey Kane fan, but now I've kind of moved on now that he's retired too. And, uh, it was Casey Kane in his van stuck in traffic and the girls were all running out, taking pictures with them, oh, taking Jesus. selfies with this was years ago, back when taking a selfie with a phone wasn't as easy as, as it is today. So I can imagine people would yeah. sit there for like a solid minute trying to take a picture with Casey Kane and no, his man. Wait a minute. <laughs> now that I think about it, 
the last time I was in New Hampshire was 2017, where Jason, you and I met up in the stands, and that's when I met Corey yeah. during the Xfinity race. So we were all in the same place at the same time. Funny how that works. Uh, yeah. Corey, that I don't so? know where you and your family. Yeah, I don't know where you and your family parked that day, Jason. Same for you. But as Angela and I are leaving the track to go back to the hotel, we're watching like this party pickup truck just drunk asunder, and they're drinking, they're having a good time, and their axle broke as they're mm. going down the hill to get onto the main drag, and we're just having to divert around them. And they don't care. The truck is basically, the butt end of the truck is on the ground. Yeah. They don't care. They're popping beers. They're having a great time. Corey, I'm sorry we uh, hijacked your spot. First race you ever went to live, and who won? Okay, this one is really easy. I I pretty much remember this, too. Uh, mine would have to be in New Hampshire in 2005. And this was the, I, I don't know like um I don't know like how this all came about and I don't even know like how I first started watching NASCAR and it's just that's the only one memory like I couldn't even like remember of but New Hampshire 2005 I was there um I don't remember well I remember that we didn't stay for the whole race but I do remember that was the race where Tony Stewart ended up winning and it was funny because uh we went back to the second. We went back to the second race in September, and of course, that was the year when you know Stewart almost swept both races when he won, when, which was won by Ryan Newman. And one funny memory was that was also the race where you know Robbie Gordon did the helmet throwing competition at one of the race cars and so forth. Uh, so for me, like you know, I've been to New Hampshire a couple times. It's a great racetrack. It's only like an hour away from my house, which is perfect. I've been to New Hampshire a couple times. I've been to Daytona once. And this is also another interesting story. Um, so I was there for the 50th running of the Daytona 500. Now, don't get me wrong. Like when I say this is the Daytona 500, like I'm talking about, you know, you know, being there, which is like, like comparing to what it is on TV, which is um, like unbelievable. And uh, not only that, it was also the 50th running of the 500. And I also been to Charlotte a couple of times as well. Um, my first ever Charlotte race I went to was back in 2006. And, it actually kind of stunk that year because we actually sat in the inside the glass booths inside the race tower, whatever it is, instead of like staying outside, which I really think it's a lot better. And, uh, and also another interesting story was back in 2014, I was there when I actually met a couple of drivers, you know, I met Ryan Newman, I met Austin Dillon, and I even met Kyle Busch, which I thought, you know, didn't really have like the best you know, perspective, you know, of him, but I thought, okay, you know, at least I got a picture with Kyle, which was perfect. But I was also at the Charlotte race in 2014, where if you guys remember, you know, there was the whole, you know, Brad Keselowski versus Denny Hamlin, Matt Kenseth, that sort of thing. And it was actually funny because we were leaving the racetrack and, and I saw the TV for about a split second. I saw there were like pit cruiser or something like that. And I thought, I thought, man, what the heck is going on and stuff? And then I, I go back to my hotel room I, I turn on ESPN and from what I didn't know, if you know, there was a big fight after the race, which of course, you know, which involved those three drivers and everything. Well, four, if you pretty much count Tony Stewart for that matter, but he didn't really have anything to do with it. All, he, all what happened was, was Brad mistakenly bumped into the back of Tony Stewart. And then what does Stewart ended up doing? Puts it in reverse and then slaps him uh, in the front quarter panel, whatever it is. And uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much my, uh, whole entire racing memories, you know, of where I've been the last couple of years and so forth. All right. I'm going to make you guys feel like you're still in diapers and I apologize ahead of time. My first live race was won by Daryl Waltrip. It was the 1989 Daytona 500. Wow. Nice. And <laughs> I, I had been following racing for about five years at the time. I didn't really have a favorite. You knew the guys. I, I was just, I was into the speed. I was into the excitement. I was into just the whole, there was a pageantry about everything. And not far from Daytona International Speedway is the Volusia County Mall, where my grandfather, he lived in Daytona, God rest his soul. Him and my grandmother, she's also passed, God rest her soul. And we would make the pilgrimage to the mall. Now that year, my granddad got him and I tickets to that particular race. 
And we go to the Volusia Mall on Friday, and they have this really strange meet and greet, the likes of which I had never seen. They just have all of basically your best 30 drivers. And, you know, even back then there was field filler. But they give you this interesting, like, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with the little block pictures. Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd, Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace, Harry Gann, Lake Speed, whatever. And you go and you stand in front of them and they sign it and what have you. And it's very mechanical. Uh, Bill Elliott was real nice. I remember that. I remember Richard Petty being real nice. That hat is bigger in person than you can ever imagine. <laughs> and I get almost all the way to the end. And my granddad's like, have you picked a favorite driver yet? I'm like, no, I really haven't. I, I'm, you know, I'm 17 at the time. So I'm really young into the NASCAR world. It wasn't real popular up here, but my granddad being down there, he really pushed me. Um, so I get to almost the end of the table, and this dude with this pixie afro looks up at me with the biggest smile on his face says, Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name's Chris. Hi, oh, hi, Chris. And he signs my little gimmick page and says, So who are you rooting for on Sunday? I'm rooting for you. That man was the number 27 Kodiak Pontiac of Rusty Wallace. So, mm -hmm. yes, that is how I fell in love with Rusty Wallace. Every time I met him, year after year after year, he couldn't be nicer. Just a fantastic human being. It sucked when he retired, but it's nice to hear him on PRN, and he's a great analyst. It was better when I heard him on ABC because yeah. when ABC was taking NASCAR races, he just broke it down. He's he's He was the precursor to Jeff Gordon, which Jeff Gordon right now, Jason, if you haven't heard me blow him up on the show – is probably the best analyst from a driver's yeah, perspective. Yeah, now you team really. him with Larry, yeah, and you team him with Larry McReynolds on the mechanical side. That's a team that's hard to beat. Uh, quick question for Jason because uh, Corey and I already talked about it. DW retiring. Uh, who fills his shoes? Mm. Oh boy, I have no idea who fills his shoes. But all I can say is, I I love DW. I think I love boogity, boogity, boogity. A lot of people think it's kind of a stupid little thing, but I love it. I'm going to miss it, but I'm really happy that he's retiring because God, can he be really annoying sometimes? But oh, yeah. I, I, I love him to death. He's a legend yeah. in the sport, and I've loved watching him for all the years. But I, I think that at some point you just kind of overstay your welcome. It's time to move on, and I'm, I'm glad that he – it, it, whether it's on purpose or whether it's just for family reasons, whether he realized that uh, it is time to move on. I'm, I'm glad he's doing it and he's not just kind of being replaced mm -hmm. that we know of. As far oh, as yeah. you could replace him, I honestly don't know. I would, I, I love watching some of the side programs before and after the race and even during the race. And this weekend I actually said something to my dad that I thought I just kind of blurted out because of how well he was doing it. Bobby Labonte is a great, he's got a great booming voice. He's got a great knowledge of the sport. I think he would be a good addition to replace uh, Daryl Waltrip. Um, I believe, I believe Corey said the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think either him or Jamie McMurray. I think McMurray still has a few years to go before he's ready for that kind of big time. But I think that Bobby Labonte would be a very fitting replacement. <clears throat> I don't necessarily, pick. I don't. I don't necessarily think, you know, again, being in radio and now doing what I do for the last four years and almost two years on this show, you don't necessarily need a booming voice. You need a voice that captures people's attention. You can be as loud as you want. Um, I don't think I could watch Rutledge Wood call a race, but when he does his <laughs> little side pieces, they're amazing. Um, I believe it was Corey, and Corey, correct me if I'm wrong, you mentioned Ricky Craven as a possible yeah. replacement because he has that voice that draws you in. It's it, like much like DW, his voice is comforting, but it also teaches you as you go along, you know, and I'll give Jeff Gordon again. I know Jason's head's about to explode because I've now said like six nice things about <laughs> Jeff Gordon. About um, damn time. <laughs> thank you. That bag over there is going to be set on fire, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> Jeff Gordon, much like DW, much like um, Rusty Wallace, had, not only has a comforting voice, but it's they teach you as you go along. Well, you see what they did here, and even with the Telestrator, 
well, what they're doing right here is he's trying to, you know, get in there and, and the dirty air and, and all of the technical stuff that you, me, or average Joe don't know about, you're learning. And the more you learn, the more you're a fan. And the more you're a fan, the deeper you get into this crazy world that we call NASCAR. But yeah, any one of those guys would be great. And I think we're missing perhaps one voice that maybe I'm choosing this for aesthetic reasons because we're not going to see this person, but I'm more and more impressed every week with Shannon Spake. And I think Shannon Spake could be a great addition to the broadcast booth. That's not a bad choice at all, actually. I mean, it's not that bad either. You know, I could just, I could say that. Mm -hmm. We just won't get to see, we just won't get to see the little skirts anymore. (laughs) <laughs> all, right. all right we've all had questions Corey. do you have a question you've always wanted answered uh let me see um so let let me just say this so even though even though we all don't know what's going to happen with the 2021 schedule coming out in like a few years or so um what racetracks do you want nascar to bring back what racetracks do you want them to add in and which racetracks do you want them to take out? Okay, uh, my, I'm going to go last because I'm writing mine down. So you're saying add, <laughs> add one. Yep. Bring back one. Add one, bring back one, take away and, one. And sack one. Okay, I yep. got it. My, my sack is written down. I'm writing it in big letters. Corey already knows the answer. Jason, why don't you start? Okay, which ones do I want them to bring back? Ooh, that's a tough add, one because add one, bring back one, stack one. Bring back one. Okay. Um, I'll go with bring back one last, but I will say sack one. Um, I don't really think that there is a bad track in in NASCAR right now altogether. I think that most of the tracks are pretty well fitting. I still think that having two Pocono races even on the same weekend is a little much. I'm yeah. glad that they're gonna get done i'm glad they're gonna get it all done in one weekend i'm so if i had to take away what are the rules can we take away a race or take away a track altogether take away a track take, that, I think take that away a track thing. take yeah. away a track altogether yeah oh, okay um all right then i'll go generic i would take away a, probably one of the cookie cutters take away texas <laughs> i think that texas and charlotte are too fami- too similar i think they're way too similar I think that I love Texas. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like that those two tracks are way too similar. And if I had to take away one of them, I would take away Texas. Um, okay. As far as where to go back, um, foo, I am not even sure where I would go back. Probably Nashville. That seems to be the hot one right now. And I've never seen racing at Nashville Speedway. So I would love to see what they would do on a track like that. See what a new track could do. Or the Milwaukee Mile. I think the Milwaukee Mile is very, very, very underrated track, and we need more short tracks in NASCAR. So one of those, I, those two. I definitely agree. Um, I probably say like for me, uh, I would say to add one. Um, I think to add one, I probably say like you know, I think NASCAR deserves a Cup race at Iowa. Now, even though the Xfinity and the mm-hmm. Truck Series have raced there for a number of years since 2009 i remember i watched the first one in 2009 on my tv and i thought it was cool that you know they went to the hawkeye state but i would probably say that you know for them to get a cup race in iowa they need to have a lot more fans in the seats and and if you look at it the last few years you know the the seats haven't been filled up for like years i mean i've been watching truck races xfinity races and cup races a lot of butts are not filled in the seats and i really don't know why and i really think you know I think this is pretty much the problem, but I really want to say, you know, to add one, I want to say Iowa deserves a cup race. I don't know when, but hopefully 2021 pretty soon. Uh, Sack one, I really, I think this is a tough call, but, you know, if I had to pick one right now, I would have to say, like, to sack one, I'm going to have to get rid of one of the Pocono races. I mean, you know, keep the June one as it is, and then hopefully, you know, you could put the July race Iowa somewhere, you know, and then that ought to way, like you could have like maybe an Xfinity cup weekend or something like that, you know, cause I know for father's day weekend, it would always be like Xfinity trucks at Iowa, which they had, which they did do last year and everything. Um, let's see. I had add one sack one of them. What was that? What was that third one? Bring, 
Bring back one. Okay. Bring back one. Bring back one. You um, you set the rules and you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so to bring back one, I will say this on a on a standard high. Now, I as much as I wanted as much I want to bring back Nashville Fairgrounds. I mean, I think it's a really good track. I mean, there's a lot of tracks I really want NASCAR to bring back, you know, to go to their heritage routes and stuff. I mean, Nashville's one of them, you know, Rockingham, I really want to see them bring back too. But I also, another track that I think NASCAR should bring back to is uh, O'Reilly Raceway Park. And I think, and I think, and I think it's time, I think it's time, you know, they should have the Xfinity series out of Indianapolis Motor Speedway, because what's the point of you know NASCAR racing at Indy. I mean, for Indy God's sake. Built, yeah, Indy was not built for NASCAR. I don't like NASCAR exactly. to be at Indy. That was probably a close second to Texas. The reason why I didn't pick it was because I know there's no chance in hell they're ever going to drop that. Exactly. No <laughs> exactly. I mean, I just look at it, you know. Yeah, I mean, Indianapolis. I mean, don't get me wrong. Now, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, I mean, they've had some great history over the years. I mean, you look at, you know, Jeff Gordon, who's won five races over there. You've had guys like Jimmy Johnson, who's won. You've had, you know, Dale Earnhardt, Bill Elliott. You've had Dale Jarrett, Bobby Labonte. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, I would just have to say this. You know, I would just have them go to the original like they did before, you know, have the uh, have the Brickyard 400 on that Sunday and then the Saturday, you know, you'd have the Xfinity Series at O'Reilly Raceway Park. And heck, mm-hmm. Friday night, bring the trucks at O'Reilly Raceway Park. I really think, you know, NASCAR should go back to Indy. And I think all three should go back to Indy. And and if I have to say that, you know, have have the trucks Xfinity go to ORP and then have the cup race at the Brickyard. And I okay. never I, I never fit in the race. I said the race that I would drop and the race that I would bring back. But the one that I would add. I never said that one, and, and this is an interesting one. I would add another road course if I was going to add a racetrack that's currently run in the Xfinity. I would run in Circuit Giles Allen Oaf and take him up to Canada. Yes. Not a, not a bad I love choice. that mm-hmm. one. <laughs> not a bad mm-hmm. choice, but last week on the show, I, I was it last week or the week before, I thought that maybe if they could do something with one of our Connecticut tracks, wouldn't be bad to see the Cup guys on Lime Rock. Oh no, that would be great. Exactly. Well, that would that be, would be awesome. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I wouldn't have to drive all over God's half acre to get to a race. But <laughs> um since it's my turn, I'm gonna mirror Corey with at Iowa. I've always said that the uh the cup guys should run Iowa. It's a fantastic track. If uh those of you watching don't know, and I'm sure my two esteemed colleagues already know, designed and partially funded by Rusty Wallace. Yes. And he mm-hmm. wanted that classic short track racing with a super speedway feel, which is why Iowa gets the speeds that it does, even though it's a smaller track. I've always thought Iowa should be on the Cup Series, what, for the last five, six years? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, if I'm going to bring one back, I'm going to really shock the people. There was It was always the second race of the season, but bring back the Rock, North Carolina mm-hmm. Speedway. Rocking, Somebody needs to buy the track. Fix it up, uh, much like North Wilkesboro. It's it's one of those tracks where there's so much history there, and it's just basically a weed field that they use for testing. North right. Carolina Speedway, The Rock. Um, watching Steve Park win that second race of the year in 2001. Watching some of the great battles between Earnhardt and Wallace and uh, Waltrip and Gant. Yeah, that racetrack meant so much to me as a kid that. You know, even as I grew into adulthood and then they sacked it, I was just never happy with that. Now, my, what race would I sack? Corey, do you want to answer this one for me? Pocono. You bet your ass. I hate <laughs> Pocono. It is the most boring race on the circuit. Every time Pocono is on, I tell Corey when we do the preview, well, I won't be watching this weekend. The Yankees are on, or maybe I need to cut the grass, or maybe I need to watch paint dry, because it's more <laughs> exciting than anything that Pocono I, has given us over the years. I don't know. I'm I'm very – I have a soft spot in my heart for Pocono because of its design and its unique nature, and it has hosted some really good races and some really good finishes. Yeah. But – I I w- I could never drop Pocono before I would drop Indy. Um, I don't know about that. I, I love. You know, I know I, I went I out love, on. A I limb. love the Brickyard, man. I I, just yeah. love I I know I went out on a limb by, um, by saying that I would get rid of a racetrack like Texas because 
to me, Texas is a redundant track as far as its configuration. But I would say, I don't know. It would be really tough for me because Indy is that kind of race for me is I, every time it's on, I don't remember the last time I watched an Indy race in NASCAR. I always kind of put that one on my schedule and say, yeah, that's a race. That's a weekend that I really don't have to make the effort to watch this on television because I don't really care. <laughs> so your Indy is my Pocono. Yeah. And so it's really, really, it's really sad because it's a legendary track. I always watch the Indy 500 and that's always oh, yeah. a great race. I watch all three races, the, uh, the Monaco Indy 500 and the Coke 600 on Memorial yep. Day weekend. But I just NASCAR cars, stock cars, or whatever you want to call them now, because they're not really stock cars anymore. Um, they just weren't built. Indy was not built for those cars. It was built for an Indy type car. Exactly. You know, that, that's my opinion on that. But yeah. I totally get where you're coming from, though, because Pocono can have some really boring races. But I think Indy is so much more of a drag. <laughs> and see, all I right. don't know. And see, I don't know. Uh... And see, I don't know how next year, you know, how Pocono is going to do that whole like double header weekend. Cause you know, I know Saturday you're going to have the trucks and cup race. And then of course, mm-hmm. Sunday, you're going to have the Xfinity slash cup race. So when I first looked at the 2020 schedule, I thought, okay, it's an exciting schedule. Don't get me wrong. And I really love the fact that, you know, how NASCAR kind of jumbled everything around, you know, considering, you know, now we have Phoenix being the championship race. We have, you know, the playoffs having some different races in it and so forth. We got Daytona being the regular season finale and everything and whatnot. But that was the only question when I was looking at the 2020 schedule was, you know, Pocono having the doubleheader weekend. I thought, okay, this is going to be exciting, but I really don't know how NASCAR is going to pull this off. I think that the new schedule next year is actually pretty amazing. They're ending the season one week earlier because of the double Pocono weekend. I think they some really great chances putting Bristol and Darlington into the, the playoffs. I think that I know there's a lot of fans that don't like the, the, the stages and the playoff formats and all that stuff. But to me, as a fan who watched in the late 90s, early 2000s, and saw all of this transformation that you guys have too, yeah. I think it's good. I think it's the best of both worlds. If you're going to have a playoff type of format, you want your best tracks to be in there. Now, Daytona's still not in there. Talladega is. But you're going to have the Charlotte represented. You're going to have Darlington represented. You're going to have Bristol represented. Yeah. You're going to have Martinsville represented. And you're going to end on Phoenix, which, while it's not the best track, the new configuration makes it a very big wild card. So no, I, Phoenix I is great them. to end on. Yeah. Phoenix is fantastic mm-hmm. to end on because we already know who's going to win. Let's just, right. Let's just be honest. I, I, I do agree on that too. And look, at, and look at and look at what happened in 2011 when uh, when Elliot Sadler was going for the championship that year. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to throw a quick hit question out here, and it doesn't necessarily require a story. It doesn't necessarily require many more than maybe one to twelve words. And I want to ask this question out loud: If there was one driver that is relatively young enough to come back onto the circuit that you would love to see race again, who would it be? (laughs) And I'm saying relatively young enough because we've seen guys race into their 60s like Morgan Shepard. We've seen guys retire in their 30s like Casey Kane. One driver you just want to see on the track one more time or for one full season, who would it be? So are you talking about drivers who are trying to recapture their career in the Xfinity series or have retired altogether? We're going to talk about guys who are no longer racing on any level. Okay. You want to see them come back. Maybe it's a cup run. Maybe it's an Xfinity run. As long as it's the top three series, one guy you want to see come back for a full run, go. Mm. You want to take this one first? <laughs> oh, you're gonna you're gonna pass off the party. All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass off. I need a second. Okay. okay. Yeah, I I need a second on this one. All right. Oh, well, I, I, I have two. I have two possibilities. Go ahead. Um, the easy one is Dale Jr. I'd like to see him come back and try to do another Xfinity or maybe even a Truck Series title run. I think that would be really cool. I think it would be good for the sport. Um, but <laughs> if I'm being a little bit 
selfish, I would love to see Casey Kane come back and do a run in the minors instead of not in the cup. I would love to see him try to do a truck series or an Xfinity series season because I think he got the short end of the stick in that five car and he should have been uh, should have been championship caliber and he wasn't. I'd love to see him come back and try to get a NASCAR championship in one of those series. Wow, good pick. Corey, what do you got? Okay, so if I had to pick one right now, um, I would definitely have to say Matt Kenseth. Really? We just saw him come back. It's, yeah, right. but very he came back temporarily. Yeah, and he but he came back, back on a limited schedule. That's All the right. wrong. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll buy it. But uh, I, if I if I had to pick another one, I definitely have to say uh, I definitely have to say Greg Biffle. Oh, ooh, the Biff. Ooh, yeah, that's a good. Ooh, that's a well, good pick. and I do want to see him run a full time schedule in the near future. And let's let's be honest, guys. Uh, next month he's going to be in the fifty one truck for uh, Kyle Busch Motorsports at uh, Texas. So I'm really excited that he's coming back, and uh, hopefully he can bring that fifty one team uh, a win. And I definitely would be excited to see that too. Mm. Great I love pick. watching him walk around during the practice with his old fire suit on and he has all of his old sponsors on there. Yeah. And, and even the team logo for Rush Fenway Racing and the only thing they covered was that Ford logo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> as much as I thought he got the shaft in his last season, um, there's so, he was basically pushed out the door. And he retired too soon. God, I'd love to see Carl Edwards get back in that car. I agree. I, I wasn't – he was one of those guys where I, I liked him. I respected him. He was never a particular favorite. When, when he got into the 19 car, I kind of paid more attention because it happens to be my lucky number. But there's something special about Carl Edwards. He was He's going to be a Hall of Famer, my opinion, first ballot. Yeah. Who just he, it never translated. That there was whatever happened with the championship opportunities. It just never translated. I, I would love to see one more solid cup run for Carl Edwards. I I've, I've always wondered what happened with the Carl Edwards situation. I've heard so many stories. Obviously, he doesn't talk very much about it. Right. I would love. I really would love to see him get into the car, but I don't think that's ever going to happen because everything I've seen from him, he is at peace with how it ended. To me, it sounded like it ended the way he wanted it to end, but who who knows? He could have been forced out. He could have just left on a whim. It's hard to tell. But um, considering what his sponsor was at that time, um, it wouldn't have shocked me if he was forced out for another driver that ended up driving that 19 car for well when you think about it <laughs> what happened to carl edwards is kind of how carl edwards got his ride in the first place jeff burton was being phased out by roush racing this is way before i think this was before the roush fendway era yeah and he was unsponsored he's driving that plain black 99 car yeah we already know and and the not only the, it wasn't rumor it was fact they're saying you know next year Carl Edwards is going to be in the 99. And my first reaction was, who the hell is Carl Edwards? We found out in short order. And mm -hmm. Carl Edwards just – Carl Edwards legitimized NASCAR in a way that, you know, we have interim co-host on the Loki and Jabroni show, uh, Chris Lynch. He knows who Carl Edwards is. Why? Because he reads Men's Health. And he's he was, yeah. in, in his younger days, a bit of a workout fanatic. So he remembers getting men's health, and there's Carl Edwards with his eight pack and just mm -hmm. busting it out like Hulk Hogan. Carl <laughs> Edwards, NASCAR's, you know, Hulk of whatever. Carl Edwards was the guy that brought fitness into the sport. Now you see guys like Casey Kane, who was shredded, guys like Kevin Harvick, who was rolling with uh, UFC fighters and managing Misha Tate. You see Kyle Bush, whose workout regimen is phenomenal. Carl Edwards started the whole thing. And, and don't Jimmy forget Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, yeah Boston okay, Marathon. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. Johnson, Boston <laughs> Marathon Jones right there. Donovan McNabb some years ago said NASCAR drivers aren't athletes. Oh, boy. Oh, I, man. I remember Twitter blowing up with pictures of Carl Edwards on the cover of Men's Health saying, do you look like this, Donovan? And mm -hmm. there was there was Carl Edwards, Hulk Hogan, like, Ur. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> does anybody else have a quick hit? Nope, I gotta get running very soon, anyways. So. All right, well, Jay, Jason, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna extend an invite to you. The next off date is in August. We're gonna have some time to fill. 
maybe we do, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll review the race that was as we go into the off week, we'll do another one of these uh, round table, what if bucket list, whatever. Let's have some fun. Yeah, definitely. I'm in. Really try to get my schedule free for that. That sounds like a lot of fun, guys. This has been and great. Thanks for having me on. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And guys, don't forget if you're in New England, go to Thompson Speedway. He is press box man extraordinaire. He is Jason Blue. Uh, <laughs> wow, I've had too much fun. And if you need to bail, bail. I will close out the show with Corey. But uh, awesome. we'll be in touch soon. Definitely got to wrap our teeth around some brown bottles. Cool. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it very much. Thank and you, I will look Jason. forward to the next. Thank you, Jason. And have share a good one. the show. You have to share. Oh, the show. definitely, definitely. Share it. <laughs> All right. Have thanks, a good one, guys. Brother. You got it. Thank you. So, Corey, as we move into the Dover weekend, and we just had some fun with these questions. Uh, now is the time where, if people are listening, if you had fun with that particular segment, we can do that for you. Send your questions in. If there's something you've always wanted to hear somebody else's opinion on, like the Carl Edwards question, like uh, Corey's question, add one, bring one back, sack one. We're happy to do that for you every single week. One question picked out by Corey, by me, by whoever, producer already Focus. Let's have some fun. We'll pimp you. We'll say, hey, uh, Chad from Lafayette, Indiana said this, or, you know, Bill from, strangely enough, Bill Rick of Massachusetts says this. Let's have some fun. Let's ask some questions. The show is only better when you guys are interactive. Now comes the part where I say, Corey, pimp, plug, and push. All right, so continue to watch the CJSB review on YouTube. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. Uh, hit the link. Well, actually, hit the bell, actually. Um, and then you'll uh, get notifications of when we go live and when we upload our episodes every single week. And uh, if you have a NASCAR fan or if you have a friend that's a NASCAR fan, please make sure you tell them about our show. Uh, Facebook, uh, it's pretty easy. Just look us up on CAJ Speed Review. Uh, like our Facebook page every week. Uh, Twitter, we're at uh, CJ underscore Speedway. Um, be sure to catch all of our episodes. I put on Twitter uh, today and yes guys that is a true story we I put uh, the last 10 of them on today we'll be putting this one on tomorrow of course uh so Instagram we are at uh CJ Speedway and this is pretty much the part where it gets a little bit exciting so um May 24th about I want to say Three weeks from now, um, I have my little go-karting event going on. It's the fifth annual Memorial Day go-karting extravaganza, which I have been holding for the last five years now. And, of course, last year I was going to end up winning four straight races. And then, of course, after doing four races, I end up losing to this guy by like three-tenths of a second. And it wasn't really pretty last year. And let's just say I ended up celebrating too early, which that wasn't really a great idea either. But, uh no, but looking through the uh, looking through all the list of people that are going to be coming, uh, so we have a good group of people. Uh, we have two people that have shared my event. We have about thirteen that are interested and ten that are coming. So it's going to be very interesting, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all the people that are going to be racing for the first time, and not to mention the people that are going to be trash talking me throughout the whole entire three weeks, which I'm really happy about. And of course, not to mention, you know. Chelsea's nickname, aka Danica Seven, worth of oh how I can't win a race or oh how my team sucks. Sorry, I had to say that, kids. But <laughs> sorry, I had to say that, kids. But that's that's my truth. So it's pretty much oh your team sucks. You guys can't win a race. You can't do this and that. Blah blah blah. Whatsoever. Let me tell you this funny story. So this was after the go karting event that I held in Pennsylvania. I think it was like two days after Thanksgiving, whatever. And truth be told. Chelsea, aka Danica Seven. I know you. I know who you are out there, and I know if you're watching this right now. Yes, I am gonna. Wow. I am gonna call this one out. So wow. So Chelsea. Chelsea I had so to do with so Chelsea Danica Seven ends up saying, uh, "Oh, we just couldn't cut it tonight in the Seven Go Daddy Car, whatever." But we will be back with a vengeance to go after Rowdy Birds himself, and uh, I have a couple allies, you know, that are gonna kick your butt. And I'm like, I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. You're talking about allies that are going to kick my butt, and you're talking about how you're going to come back with a vengeance, and you're going to beat me? 
May 24th. Uh uh, I don't think so. You know, that's that is just so not happening. And uh and honestly, like don't get me wrong on this. Like, I've been playing that video, like, honestly, like, over and over and over the last few weeks. And 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 I actually have to laugh at it. The part where she said, like, you know, we will be back with a vengeance. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, a vengeance my butt. And then, of course, the part where she also <laughs> says, uh, and then, of course, the other part where she says, oh, I have a couple allies that are going to be at, that are going to kick your butt and you better be scared. And I'm looking at her like, are you kidding me? Like, you know. Your allies shouldn't be scared. I'm I'm not scared of your allies. Your allies should be scared of me because right. look who's talking. The by the way, but oh uh, my God. no, that's gonna no, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much the fun part about it. And I'm and I'm pretty sure I might be getting an earful of this maybe maybe after the show and so forth. And uh, she'll watch. She'll probably text me saying like, I can't I can't believe you said all that stuff on there. Why did you say that? You know that you're gonna kick my butt and everything. I'm like, hey, because I'm not afraid to lose. You know, actually, I'm not afraid Corey, to uh, to root anybody out of the way. Corey, I got two comments. Uh, the first <laughs> one is actually um, what Chelsea's going to do is she's going to tell you a joke when she sees you. And the joke is, what did the five fingers say to the face? What? Slap. That's what's going to happen. You bet your butt. So, uh, second comment, and actually, I'm going to throw a third one out there. I dig your passion for the go-karting and I've watched your videos and I know you're out there. You're doing a great job, but eventually at some point, the real Rowdy Burns is going to come out and challenge you. I'm not going to say you're going to, I'm not saying I'm going to win, <laughs> but there will be a challenge. I would spin my own family to win a race. I would put, people into walls i would flip them i would go tony danza rusty wallace if you've never seen that video go to youtube after the show find tony danza rusty wallace go-kart race tony danza who i hate was on the receiving end of a fantastic bump by rusty wallace uh the third thing i've been trying to figure out the entire show are you wearing a ryan newman t-shirt what what t-shirt are you wearing right now am i right it is a ryan newman t-shirt thank you so correct mundo I, I'm I'm watching the letters and you're not really it's not really in picture, but I'm like, is he wearing a Ryan Newman t-shirt? Funny story about that race, your that your first race ever. I was there. He also won the modified race that weekend. I believe he did. Oh, I don't believe I know because <laughs> uh I I actually went to a uh Q and A meet and greet with Ryan Newman. I won a seat cushion signed by ryan newman and i gave it to my friend frank sadowski who was a huge ryan newman fan so frank at the end of the show right here my man scooter bro we gotta watch a race together soon we've been talking about it we haven't watched a race together in four years maybe it's time you come maybe the next time Corey's at the azarju mini mansion uh by the way mark azarju wants us back he's gonna be gone until august with his job however He's opening the home, so maybe we do a playoff race at his house, live feed Jones, whatever. Maybe we bring Frank in and have a good time. I agree. Maybe we bring Jason in and have a good time. You know what? Why don't we just bring everybody we know? We'll bring Tzatziki Sauce, the immortal, uh, the eternal plan, the goddess of love. We'll bring the kids. We'll bring a human zoo. We'll have everything. You know what? I might just hire Kiss to play the pre-show if I had that kind of money. Guys, thank you so much. This was a fun night. Thank you again. I'm tipping my Falcons cap to Patriots fan Jason Blue. Um, yes, I know. He'll razz me about that for the rest of my life. However, um, can't thank you guys enough for tuning in. It's been great. Follow us uh, at all the places you heard Corey talk about, but also go to anchor.fm forward slash CJ Speedway and help the show in any way you can. And now with the two most famous words in CJ Speed Review history, I turn it over to Corey Huffnagel. Good night. You never fail, my man. You never fail. Thank you. <laughs>